Hello everyone, Laura here and <laughs> Hello everyone, Laura here and welcome to Joyful Miles and ah May. Time for lovely spring weather and running in the sun now that that hideous winter is long behind us. May is also National Skin Cancer Awareness Month, which shines light on how skin cancer is the most common form of cancer in America. According to the American Academy of Dermatology, one out of every five people will develop some form of skin cancer in their lifetime, and one person dies from melanoma, the deadliest form, per hour. Those are not good stats, y'all. I myself have already been that one in five growing up. We lived on a farm and we never used sunblock. Then in my late teens and early 20s, there was the sunbathing with baby oil. And oh, if I listen really hard, I can still hear the sizzles. And then there was the tanning beds. Worst thing you can do for your skin. Add in the fact that I have very pale skin and blue eyes and a family history of skin cancer, all of which led me to having my very first basal cell carcinoma cut out and burned off at the age of 25. It was biopsied and afterwards the doctor called me up and said, this is a direct quote here, it had the cancer rate of a 90 year old farmer who had lived in the sun for his entire life. Mm, yeah, not good. He said this was my sign to take skin protection seriously and I listened especially since I am using Retin-A on my face and chest and other anti-aging products in an effort to reverse past damage, but also makes my skin very photosensitive. So with that, let's chat about ways that you can protect your skin while outdoors because no one is safe regardless of age, gender, race, skin tone, anyone can be affected. Take for example, my husband, he has olive toned skin, but he had a bad spot removed that was dug out about two years ago. So protect yourself. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a scientist, doctor, or dermatologist, or anyone with medical training. Also, if something that I present to you is incorrect, or studies have shown that it's not true, my apologies. I try to keep this as accurate as possible, but if there are any changes, I will put them in the description box. So let's get started with one of the best ways to protect your skin, and that is to wear sunscreen on all exposed skin every time you run, regardless of time of day, time of year, or whether it's cloudy. To better explain why, let's chat about ultraviolet rays. The sun emits two different types of ultraviolet rays that affect your skin, UVA and UVB. They are both harmful, but in different ways. UVB rays are short wave ultraviolet rays that affect the top layer of your skin the dermis, and plays a key role in the development of skin cancer. These are the rays that burn your skin and also where you get your vitamin D from. Their intensity does vary by season, time, location, with 10 to 4 being the peak hours, depending upon altitude and how close you live to the equator. This is why a common suggestion is to run early in the morning or later in the evening when the burning rays aren't as strong. The key word here is strongest. If you can see the sun, the sun can see you. So if you're going for a run at like 7 a.m. in the morning when the UVB rays aren't as strong, they are still reaching the earth and you can still be affected. So wear your sunscreen, especially since there's also the UVA rays to worry about. UVA rays are the long wave ultraviolet rays that prematurely age your skin. So think UVB, burning, UVA, aging. They penetrate deep in your epidermis, the skin's thickest layer, causing premature wrinkles, hyperpigmentation, or sunspots, hello, <laughs> and the deadliest forms of cancer. Unlike UVB rays that are filtered by glass, UVA rays penetrate through glass, windows, clouds, plus they are always strong throughout the year, regardless of time or season. So if you're going for a run on a cloudy day or you have your bare arms exposed while driving in your car, you're still affecting your skin. Something I've heard quite often is the sun's not out. You don't need sunblock. So not true, the rays are still reaching the earth and if anything, you can actually get more of a sunburn because you don't feel the heat on your skin. So you're not thinking of sun protection. UVA rays not only come through windows, they also bounce off shiny surfaces. So if you work in an office with windows nearby, you still can be affected. Great, right? <laughs> 
It's also important to know that concrete, water, snow, sand can also reflect UV rays. So if you're at the pool or at the beach under an umbrella, you still need to reapply your sunblock every 80 minutes because sand can reflect up to 17% of UV rays. So now this leads to the question, what kind of sunscreen is better, physical or chemical? And oh boy, is this a topic. Let's go over the differences first. A physical or mineral sunblock is made from minerals such as zinc oxide and titanium dioxide or a combination of two, which reflect UV rays from your skin. They physically stay on top of your skin as a protective layer, acting like a shield to block and scatter UV radiation before it can penetrate. There's both pros and cons to using a physical sunscreen. Here's the pros. They are broad spectrum, meaning they block both UVA and UVB rays, although take note, zinc oxide has a better UVB-UVB balance than titanium dioxide. They work as soon as they're applied to the skin, meaning there's no wait time. They are also a good choice for someone with sensitive skin, such as myself, because they don't irritate. They last longer when in direct UV light, they don't clog your pores, and they have a longer shelf life. Non-nanoparticle mineral sunblocks are also a safer choice for our oceanic ecosystem. I'm going to look at my notes to explain why. Non-nano means the ingredient particles are above 100 nanometers in size, leaving corals untouched since they cannot be ingested. There's also some cons, however. Depend upon quality, they can be harder to rub in and harder to wash off. Although I have found that using a oil-based um, makeup remover, such as Clinique's Take the Day Off Balm, can really help. They rub off more easily and can rub off on your clothes or car seats. And because they are a physical layer, they do leave a gray or white cast. Most also don't work well under makeup. For the ones that do, you definitely want to check out Hot and Flashy's annual mineral sunscreen review. And actually, if you're a mature woman or someone who is interested in taking care of their skin, you definitely want to check out her channel because she's the bomb. So, but after you watch this one. So now let's talk about chemical sunscreens. I'm going to cheat. A chemical sunscreen has ingredients that penetrate the top layers of your skin, absorbing UV radiation and then converting them to heat, which is later released from the body mind-blowing, right? And like mineral sunscreens, they come with pros and cons. The pros are they are easier to rub in and wash off. They don't leave any gray or white cast or streaking. And also because they tend to be more sweat resistant, they are better for longer periods of physical activity. The cons are you must wait 15 to 20 minutes until they are effective. They can irritate sensitive skin, clog pores, and also they can cause eye irritation when the sunscreen you know, drips into your eyes through sweat. Some ingredients can also be harmful to your health, such as oxybenzone. In fact, the FDA just issued a warning of how some ingredients in chemical sunscreen can be absorbed into your bloodstream. There is no evidence in the study that shows there is a health risk, so further testing must be done, but it is something to think about. Also, their protection levels drop when in direct UV light and require frequent applications. They don't have as long as a shelf life, and certain chemicals can damage our oceans. In fact, going back to my notes here, Hawaii passed a bill that will prevent the sale of sunscreens containing ingredients that have been linked to coral bleaching, such as oxybenzone and octin... Yeah, this one. <laughs> the new law goes into effect on January 1st, 2021, and more cities and states will be taking similar action. So you're going to be seeing a lot more reef-friendly sunblocks coming out, which is a good thing. So which is best to use, a physical or a chemical? During my last yearly skin exam, and yes, I do get one every year, my dermatologist recommended a physical sunscreen for me since I do have a higher risk of getting skin cancer. His personal recommendation was CeraVe, which we're going to talk about later. However, he also said that as long as someone is using a broad spectrum, water-resistant sunblock with an SPF of 30 or higher and uses it religiously, he's happy. He also said it depends upon the activity. For a long, sweaty run, a chemical might be better since it is more water-resistant. 
As for me, I have quite the arsenal of some blocks that I use for different occasions. Plus, I am always researching new brands and reevaluating favorites and discontinuing their use if necessary. For example, I used to be a huge fan of this Neutrogena Lip Balm, but then I realized it has oxybenzone and I don't use it anymore. I'm actually trying out some mineral lip balms that I will be sure to link below if I love them. One place I go to when researching a new product is the Environmental Working Group, also known as the EWG, which is a nonprofit organization that does research and promotes a healthier life. They have an app called Healthy Living where you can scan or input a product and find out how they rate it for UV, UVB balance, any health risk, and they also give them a rating from 1 to 10, with 1 being the lowest. The EWG does come with some controversy, however, uh, regarding issues like um, questionable studies and funding sources. And the app isn't always up to date with newer products, or it might show a old formula for a reformulated product. So while much of the information is very helpful, I don't use it as the gospel. I use it as a jumping point to do my own research. For example, there is a lot of debate over retinol palamate, which is a form of vitamin A and one of the ingredients in like this mineral powder sunscreen. The EWG believes this is harmful, especially for pregnant women. It is approved by the FDA, for now at least, and the American Academy of Dermatology says that it's safe for now. I choose to use this product. But this shows why it's important to do your own research or talk to your doctor before deciding what you put on your body. And while we're going there, don't take this video or other blogs or videos as the gospel because while I, I tried to be very accurate and I did a lot of research for this, you know, opinions always vary. Plus, you never know, a new study could come out tomorrow saying this is dangerous. So take it with a grain of salt and always do your research. So with that, let's talk about some of my favorite sunscreens. For training runs, I mostly opt for a physical mineral sunscreen, especially on my face and my chest where I use Retin-A. I have tested many, many brands and by far my favorite is Thanks Sport, which has a 20% zinc oxide, making it good for both UVA and UVB protection. And it is non-nanoparticle. While it does take more effort than a chemical brand, it rubs in quite nicely, and after about 15 to 20 minutes, the white cast does fade. It's also water resistant for up to 80 minutes, and at $21 a bottle, it is a little pricier than some other brands, but considering how much money I put into products for skincare, it is well worth the money. Neutrogena Pure and Free Baby with an SPF of 50 is also a great option and gives super protection, but it has a consistency of Elmer's glue and takes a long time to rub in. It can also rub off on your clothes. So I usually just use this on my legs. That way my Think Sport will last a little longer. As for my dermatologist recommendation for CeraVe, I've tried it before and didn't love it. Hey, Sarah. If you heard that ding, I'm sorry. And that's Siri now. <laughs> Woo! Now for races or training runs over 80 minutes, I do use a chemical sunscreen because they leave no white cast, they don't rub off on my clothes, and they tend to last longer. A classic favorite is Copper Tone Sport, either the 30 or the 50. They have a four rating on the EWG. The lowest that they will give any chemical sunblock is a three. They also make a sport free with no oxybenzone, parabens, PABA, or fragrance, but I haven't tested that one yet. If you have, I would love to see your thoughts in the notes below. However, there's no mention of it being reef friendly and I couldn't find any online, so I would not use this at the beach. A new favorite for me is this Ocean Potion Sport 50 that has no oxybenzone, it is reef friendly, and has no added parabens. It's gluten cooling. There's actually like a menthol in it that gives this nice little cooling feeling on your skin. And it's also antioxidant enriched. This is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. I did check the reviews on Amazon and I saw some reports of people breaking out in hives from this. I have very sensitive skin and I have never had an issue even when using on my face. So I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. 
Now, when I am outdoors all day long, like when Bob and I biked the Great Allegheny Passage, I am going to do the recap for that one. Mark my words, I do reapply sometimes with a spray. I realize that this can pose a health hazard, so I make sure to do this outside in a ventilated area and I don't breathe in the fumes. My favorite is this banana boat Simply Protect Sport with an SPF of 50 broad spectrum. Um, it has 25% fewer ingredients and made without oxybenzone or parathens. It also has no added oils or fragrance and is water resistant for up to 80 minutes. This is also recognized on the Hawaii.com website as being reef friendly. I will link that article below if you would like to find out other products and how you can also keep our oceans safer. For non-sporting activities, my holy grail sunscreen is Sunblock SPF 50. This is broad spectrum, water resistant up to 80 minutes, gluten free and vegan. And it's also enriched with antioxidants. So it feels very good on your skin. Dermatologists test it and I just love this stuff. It rubs in very easily. It has no greasy feel and it smells nice. Now for days when I'm indoors all day, such as the winter, but I still want to protect my skin from any UVA rays that are coming through the window, I do use this um, Botanical Australian Gold 50. And as I've mentioned before, I do love this Brush On Sun Defense Mineral Sunscreen. It is 17.3% titanium dioxide, 20% zinc oxide, and is non-nano. This is also wonderful for applying more sunscreen over makeup. However, keep in mind that titanium dioxide can be carcinogenic when inhaled. So I make sure to do this in a very well ventilated place and I don't breathe in the powder. So now that we discussed my favorite, let's talk about application because another important aspect is how much you apply and how often. Adults with an average build need to use one ounce of sunblock on their entire body and reapply it at least every two hours. So this means that if you are of average build, don't ask me what that is because I do not know, and you run in just shorts or shorts and a sports bra, you need to be going through a seven ounce bottle of sunscreen for every seven runs. A good way to find out if you are using enough is to go buy a shot glass, which is one ounce. Unfortunately, this is the only shot glass I have in our house and really isn't a great example. First, squirt in what you think you use for your whole body, and if it doesn't quite reach the line, fill it up and then use that to apply all over your body to give you a sense of how much to use. The clothing you wear is also important. Darker, brighter colors such as blacks and red absorbing more rays as compared to white or pastel ones. Heavier fabrics that have a tighter weave such as polyester, rayon, and other synthetic materials offer the best choices for sun protection. Thinner, lighter fabrics such as cotton or silk or ones that you can see through when held up to the light offer little protection. For example, a white cotton t-shirt only offers a UPF of around five, even less when it's wet. Clothing that covers more of your body is obviously going to provide more protection, as well as looser clothing that hangs on the body rather than tight, form-fitting garments that stretch out the fabrics and the fibers and allow more sun through. Considering these factors, I don't put sunblock under like my running shorts, um, thicker compression socks, or my sports bra. But if I am wearing a more opaque see-through tank top, I will cover everywhere, especially since it's going to lose more protection when it's wet with sweat. Now let's talk about other ways you can protect your skin while running or doing outdoor activities. The first is a hat or visor with a broad brim that will shield some of your face. Plus also if you are using a chemical sunblock, um, it does absorb some sweat and keeps less from stinging your eyes. If you do have a side part or some bare spots, you want to make sure that you hit those up with sunblock as well though. And the tops of your ears. Don't forget the tops of your ears. I'm also a fan of cooling rags and gaiters. If it's really hot and I feel like the sun is just beating my skin to death, I will actually wear this over my head and up and over my cheeks. I would demonstrate that, but you know, hair and makeup, y'all. Another trick of mine is to take a cooling rag and tuck it into my shirt or my tank top. That way it can protect my chest a little bit better. 
Regardless of whether I use a chemical or a physical sunscreen, it always seems to rub and streak on my arms, uh, especially near my elbows. So I wear UV protecting arm sleeves or long sleeves that are made from cooling fabric. So that only is my skin being extra protected. It's also more comfortable in hot runs. I still always wear sunscreen, however, underneath of them. Right now I am loving these long sleeves with thumb holes. You gotta love thumb holes. Um, and they're only $15 on, on Amazon, so good price. Take note that some UV protecting clothing do have special washing requirements in order to keep them effective. This one says to wash in just water. A running shirt that we wash in just water. I will just take it into the shower with me, rinse it off in there, and then hang it to dry. Also important is UV protecting sunglasses. Not only do quality sunglasses make you more comfortable, they help protect your eyes and also keep you from squinting, which you know what they cause. Now before closing up this very long video, I wanna briefly discuss some other products that I love for protecting my skin during non-sporting activities. This hat from Amazon is amazing. I wear it whenever I go kayaking because the five inch brim really protects my face. Plus it has a cord to tighten it up. Of course, it's at the beach, but I do love it. One of our absolute favorite, favorite products and something we have been using for at least 17 years are the Joe Shade Umbrella, which has an SPF of 50. It is so super convenient and easy to set up. It also has stakes too for when it is windy. While in my Jeep, another favorite are these sun gloves that have an SPF of 50. I am also loving my new UV blocker umbrella that has a UPF of 50. Not only does this protect your skin, it also makes it 10 degrees cooler underneath. So it's great for hot weather. So there you go, my video for running in the sun and protecting your skin. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you do, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification for video updates. Also, all the products that I have mentioned and more you can find in links below or in Jackie and I's Amazon storefront. Definitely check that out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the support. I hope this wasn't too overwhelming. It was kind of overwhelming to put together and film, but we got through it okay together. Now, take care and have a joyful day.